There was a feeling for a very long time that the brain was just too complicated to understand. Any disease of the brain is challenging because you don't have direct access to the organ. You cannot take a biopsy except in very, very extreme situations. My name is Steve Hauser. Alberto Ascheri. A multiple sclerosis is a disease described in the 1800 by Charcot in France. It's caused by an overactive immune system. Our immune defenses that should be protecting us against foreign invaders, when overactive, turns against tissues of our body. It is characterized by the loss of myelin. Myelin is uh, the insulation of nerves in the brain, brain and, and spinal, spinal cord. cord. When the myelin covering is lost, like electrical wiring that is lost. It can affect any part of the brain at different moments, and that is what causes a variety of symptoms. Visual, hearing, motor, cognition, sensory, virtually any, any function. The epidemiology of MS, which is the distribution of MS across different countries, is strongly suggestive of environmental factors. Understanding the environmental triggers that lead to MS give us the chance to develop preventions. I started suspecting the role of EBV, Western Wide Virus EBV for short, uh, more than probably around 25 years ago, even, even earlier. You know, people like the idea of the Eureka moment. The reality is that you think you made a discovery, right? But then you need to convince the rest of the world. How can we design an experiment uh, uh, to test this hypothesis? For multiple sclerosis, the key was developing a model for MS in the laboratory that exactly mimicked the type of tissue damage that was happening in our patients. In epidemiology, when you have a theory like this, you really start looking around the planet. Say, so where can I find a population that is large enough with hundreds of thousands of people not infected with the virus? And how can I follow this population and see what happens? The US military have been uh, testing young men and women recruited in the Army, Navy, and Air Force for HIV since the early 1990s. Instead of throwing away the blood, they created this huge repository and they kept all the leftover serum from HIV testing. So the first step was to identify collaborators within the military. And through the collaboration with them, we designed together the study. We then wanted to figure out how the immune system was attacking the brain. In science, as in so many other things, we pivot slowly. And I wish, looking back, that I had had the creativity to be more expansive in how I was thinking about the possibilities. So we spent several years trying to prove that the expected parts of the immune system, called T lymphocytes, were the culprits because it caused brain inflammation in animal models. But every time we looked for the tissue damage that was being caused by these allergic T cells that didn't look at all like our patients. And then it was on a boat on the way to a meeting when another physician scientist who was working in the laboratory with me said, maybe it's not T cells at all. Maybe it's B cells. This was a totally unexpected idea but it was the best boat ride I have ever been on. We ran back to the laboratory, and within three weeks, were able to show that B cells and the antibodies that they made were deposited on the degenerating tissue, leading to MS inflammation and brain damage. Even if other factors could potentially increase the risk of MS, and we've been investigating vitamin D deficiency, cigarette smoking, some people suggest a measles virus, chlamydia, EBV infections stand out for the extreme strength of the association. It was clear that there was no really a strong signal for anything but EBV. It means that people who are at risk for MS have an immune and genetic background that causes them to respond to Epstein-Barr virus in a way that then triggers a brain immune response. This is called molecular mimicry, that there is something on the Epstein-Barr virus that resembles something, presumably in the myelin of the brain, 
and the immune response to Epstein-Barr virus then also responds inappropriately to our healthy brain tissue. So it's not the virus alone that, you know, multiplies and causes in, in the brain damage. It's the way the body responds to the virus. The identification of the Epstein-Barr virus being at the center of what makes MS happen is one of the great achievements of modern epidemiology. It is a crucial finding because if you're not infected with the virus, virtually you don't get the mess. The Epstein-Barr virus, once it infects our body, the virus stays in your body until you die. It lives in B cells, the cells that are the culprit in multiple sclerosis. So this brings together the epidemiology and the focus on Epstein-Barr virus infection and the B cell story in multiple sclerosis in a way that I think has a chance to lead to a cure within our lifetimes. This opened up the possibility of a vaccine. That would be the, the first idea that came to mind. If we could prevent infection with the virus, then we could prevent the, the, the disease. Because of the successes against brain inflammation that B cell therapies have given us, we now have a very clear picture for how to eliminate this residual inflammation responsible for progression. Eradication is a very strong uh, word. Even if we could prevent uh, 50, 60 percent of the MS cases, you know, it's a huge number. We now have the platforms to actually ask if the immune system has been rebooted and if MS is no longer in the picture for any individual patient. I think we've now the instrument to understand the causes of these diseases. So I've never been more optimistic about the future, what's in store for our patients, also important for the millions of patients who don't have MS today, but who will in the future.